In this clip, we see 30 B-24s each dropping 52 anti-personnel fragmentation bombs. In late 1944, the USAAF experimented to find the most effective type of bomb to destroy German artillery guns which were attacking U.S. tanks. Two problems needed to be resolved. What type of bomb would best destroy or permanently disable the artillery gun and the most effective weapons delivery system? The intent of this video is to review the results of live fire testing where 18 bombs were detonated near a captured German 75mm Pac-40 anti-tank gun. The gun's damage after each bomb detonation was evaluated. In this channel's video, we discussed flak suppression attack tactics. The flak batteries are here. The large main attacking flyover force is here. The four front waves of anti-flak planes dropping chaff, phosphorus, and fragmentation bombs. These munitions will disrupt flak crews from attacking the main formation by the chaff, limiting the gun laying radar's effectiveness, the phosphorus smoke bombs limiting visual targeting, and the fragmentation bombs injure or kill the flak crews. The goal of this attack is to allow the main force to fly over the flak guns unmolested, not necessarily to destroy the guns. This page from a declassified February 1945 monthly intelligence and operations document describes the challenges of targeting anti-tank artillery guns from the air. Gun positions are difficult targets given their small size. Gun positions are usually within revetments which have been reinforced by earthen structures like sandbags. A bomb striking outside this boundary is usually not damaging to the gun. To be effective, a bomb must hit and detonate inside the revetment. The bomb delivery system should be able to place a bomb within a 30-foot diameter circle. This image shows German artillery guns deployed in the open, protected by a built-up static revetment and a partial earthen revetment. This page ranks bomb accuracy delivery type from a 1946 explosives and terminal ballistics document. The greatest accuracy in order includes fighter strafing, fighter and medium bomber rocket attacks, fighter dive bombing, fighter glide bombing, medium bomber at medium altitude bombing, and the lowest accuracy is with high altitude bombing. The bomb should be both of sufficient number and likely to strike within the revetment and of destructive force to permanently disable the gun. The most effective weapons delivery system is the dive bombing P-47 Thunderbolt. A P-47 can carry 40 20-pound fragmentation bombs or 12 90-pound fragmentation bombs or two 500-pound general purpose bombs. A shotgun effect strike of 80 20-pound fragmentation bombs is more likely than the other bombs considered to hit within the revetment based on the sheer number of bombs released. The test will evaluate the damage inflicted by 20-pound and 90-pound fragmentation bombs had on a captured German 75mm anti-tank gun. This page from a 1955 aircraft bombs document shows a size comparison of World War II U.S. fragmentation bombs. The 20-pound M41 is located here and the larger 90-pound M82 is here. One advantage of fragmentation bombs is that a direct hit is not required to destroy the target. These bombs act like hand grenades. The damage is from the bomb's fragments, not its blast effect. However, the target must be within the bomb's lethal range. This page from a 1945 Naval Bomb Disposal Unit document provides characteristics and a cutaway of the M41 fragmentation bomb used in this test. The bomb is 19.5 inches in length and 3.6 inches in diameter. The fragmentation coil is 0.56 inches thick. The weight equates to 20.3 pounds when filled with 2.7 pounds of TNT. That's around 24 times the explosive fill of a World War II pineapple-style hand grenade. The bomb's AN-110 nose fuse is here, and the body's inner tube is here. The inner tube is wrapped by a 0.56 inch thick steel wire shaped like a compressed thick spring. Its AN-110 nose fuse is set for instantaneous bomb detonation at contact. At detonation, the bomb's outer thick coil fractures into over a thousand fragments of various sizes, like seen in this image from a June 1943 Air Staff Intelligence report. 20 M41s are held in the M26 cluster and the M13 cluster adapter, like seen in this image. The weight of the assembly is roughly 500 pounds. The 20 bomblets will be released from the cluster assembly when the cluster is released from the plane. The 20 bomblet cluster loaded on a P47's wing pylon in this image and in this image. Close-up view of the M41s loaded in the cluster container. 
These were often dropped with incendiary loadouts over Japan to hamper firefighting efforts. The other cluster containers in this B-29 bomb bay contained 37 M-69 napalm bomblets, a close-up of the M-41 20-pound fragmentation bomb. This page shows characteristics on a cutaway of the larger M82 90-pound fragmentation bomb and its six-bomb cluster container. It functions just like the smaller M41. The M82 bomb is 28 inches in length and 6 inches in diameter. The bomb's steel coil diameter is thicker at 0.94 inches. The weight equates to 91.6 pounds when filled with 12 pounds of a Composition B explosive. Six of these bombs are loaded into the M27 cluster container and the M14 cluster adapter. Adapter. The minimum release altitude equates to 1,000 feet to give time for the bomb's fuse to arm. This image shows the M82 cluster container mounted on a P-47. The weight of the cluster equates to 585 pounds. The six M82s will also separate from the cluster container at bomb release and detonate at contact. This image outlines the flight trajectory of a four-plane P-47 dive bomb attack. The 75mm anti-tank gun is here. The dive starts at an altitude of 10,000 feet, dropping to 8,000 feet, picking up speed to confuse the ground AA gunner's firing solution. The planes flying in a line astern formation start their attack dive. This is the most common attack formation. The dive angle is between 50 and 70 degrees. The steeper the dive angle, the more accurate the attack. The fragmentation clusters are released at an altitude between two to 3,000 feet, where the fragmentation bomblets are instantly released from the cluster containers, and they will continue on their path, striking the gun's target zone. The four-plane P-47 formation will drop either 160 20-pound M-41 bombs or 48 90-pound M-82 bombs. A captured German 75mm anti-tank gun was tested by assessing the damage created by statically detonating 12 20-pound M41 bombs and 6 90-pound M82 bombs at a spacing represented by the revetment. The gun was evaluated after each detonation. A suspended M41 20-pound fragmentation bomb 15 feet from the gun ready to detonate. This page from a 1943 intelligence bulletin document describes the 75mm Pac-40 anti-tank gun. The gun's length equates to 19 feet 2 inches, 54 inches in height, a barrel length of 10 feet 6 inches, and the weight equates to 3,350 pounds. Another view of the German 75mm Pac-40 anti-tank gun. These guns are about one-fifth the weight of the German 88mm flat gun. The results of a 20-pound fragmentation bomb detonation. Case fragments dented the breech ring here and locked up the firing mechanism here. These minor damage locations are considered field repairable by the gun crew. 20-pound fragmentation bomb strikes on the trigger release, hand wheel, trigger cable, shoulder guard, and sight carry box. These are all nuisance strikes not affecting the continued operation of the gun. These 20-pound bomb fragment tube hits and cradle hits produce shallow dents which do not affect the gun's firing performance. The 20-pound bomb fragments do not have enough strike energy to dramatically affect the heavy parts of the gun structure. 90-pound bomb fragments punch through the gun's cradle here and block the gun's recoil mechanism from functioning. 90-pound bomb fragments deeply deform the gun's barrel at these locations. The barrel's inner diameter is deformed and will not allow a projectile to pass. A 90-pound fragmentation bomb detonating 7.5 feet from the gun completely disabled it. The results of the test include, in half of the 20-pound fragmentation bomb hits, the damage is minor and would still allow continued usage of the gun. In the other half of the cases, the gun may require a trip to the repair shop. A 90-pound fragmentation bomb hit within the revetment will almost always disable the gun, and in half of these cases, the gun will require a trip to the repair shop. The 90-pound fragmentation bomb is the most effective and smallest bomb type to best disable the size of gun. If you have found this German anti-tank gun bomb selection test results review interesting and informative, please consider supporting the channel by liking, commenting, and subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.